Hi, I'm Dr. Derek Alessi, author of Lose Fat Forever, The Beam No Triangle Diet, host of Live It Fit Now, and contributor for USA Today. And I want to talk about some fat dropping nutrition. When I meet with people during a private fat loss fitness consultation, we spend a lot of time talking about blood sugar, insulin, and how to control it so we have better health and we drop body fat. During that time, I introduce a term that I'm sure a lot of you have heard about, and that is the glycemic index. So the purpose of this video today is to make sure that we understand and you can see exactly how the glycemic index works, what it means, and why it's important to you. So I start here at this whiteboard, and really it comes down to this. I'm going to draw this out, and by no means am I a graphic artist. This would be a representation of blood sugar. If your blood sugar stays in a range, a very small range, during the day between about 80 and 120, that's very good, it's excellent. Especially from the morning, afternoon, into dinner and beyond, if your blood sugar stays in a small range, the better. The smaller the range, the better health and the better energy you're gonna have. Now, the danger occurs when we eat in a way in which we have many frequent high blood sugar spikes throughout the day. So whenever blood sugar is being elevated, it can cause a problem. And the problem is that this would be a picture of a blood vessel. And when blood glucose goes high, when we eat things that are high in sugar, high in carbs, bread, ice cream, cereal, milk, juice, alcohols, candy, ice cream, pretzels, things like that, what happens is our blood vessels fill up with these little red dots. These little red dots are sugar molecules and the reason why they're bad is because it's kind of like if you had a garden hose at home and instead of water in the hose you put acid in the hose and acid stayed in the hose for any amount of time it eventually will eat through the hose. Well the same thing happens to your blood vessel. The blood vessels get damaged the more often and the longer that sugar stays inside your bloodstream, which of course is extremely bad. Nobody wants any type of damage to the blood vessel, and the reason why that's important is because the most amount of blood that we have in our body is in our organs. And that ultimately is the reason why people with high blood sugar, diabetics, eventually have diseases of the organ. It could be everything from the eyes, it could be the brain, and not just stroke, but also dementia. And keep in mind, dementia is in seven stages. The seventh and worst is called Alzheimer's disease, which is fatal. And a lot of health organizations are now calling it type three diabetes, which means if you have type two diabetes, you have about a 90% chance or so of developing dementia and then Alzheimer's, which is type three diabetes. The heart, and of course the heart is the most well studied of all the organs when it comes to blood glucose or blood sugar, especially if it's high. The higher the blood sugar, the greater chance you're going to have of coronary artery disease and a myocardial infarction, which is a very fancy way of saying a heart attack. Then on top of it, the liver. In fact, in the 27 years that I've been doing this, I've been seeing more and more cases of fatty liver disease and cirrhosis of the liver that have nothing to do with just the overconsumption of alcohol. So years ago, if somebody had fatty liver disease or cirrhosis of the liver, it was because they were a very addicted drinker. Nowadays, though, it's more likely that they're very addicted to carbs. In fact, the carbs could come in many forms. They could come in, as I mentioned earlier, simple sugars like ice cream and candy and fruit juices and sugar, but it also could come in the form of double sugars or complex carbohydrates such as bread and cereal and pasta and rice and crackers and pizza and, and paninis and all of those things as well. It doesn't stop there. The kidneys. The kidneys, of course, are very exposed. In fact, the kidneys, the vessel walls are extremely fragile and it's one of the earlier places that blood problems happen and it starts causing problems or renal failure and that's the reason why there are so many strip plazas up and down the roads that have a kidney or renal failure places. And then lastly, it could cause problems of the arms or legs or the extremities. So a lot of people might develop neuropathy, which can lead into gangrene and then eventually amputation. 
All of those are really bad things that happen when blood sugar is elevated too frequently, too often, too high. So what does this mean? Well, it means this, and before all of this bad news sits in, and there's nothing good about it, keep in mind though that your body is very smart. It's intelligent. You were born with a very intelligent security system built in. That security system is called your pancreas. And the pancreas, just like that very smart security system, monitors this 24-7, 365 days a year, every part of your entire life, unless you are unfortunate enough to be born with type 1 diabetes. So your pancreas monitors it, and if it detects that your blood sugar is too high and that damage is going to occur to your vessel walls and to your organs, it calls for help and it sends for a messenger to help lower the blood sugar. That help comes in the form of the hormone insulin. Pardon my writing here, I know it's very hard to read. But the insulin's job and the insulin role is to gather up the blood glucose and to take it away. So what happens is, in fact, if you watch it under a compound microscope, insulin engulfs the sugar, it gathers it up, it takes it out of the vessel wall so that more damage doesn't occur to the vessel wall. Now, where does the insulin sugar concentration go to? And the answer is, it can go to a couple different places, in fact, three. It might go to your muscle tissue if you're exercising, maybe about 10%. Uh, it could go to your liver. In fact, about 10 to 15% can go to your liver as well until your liver is full and saturated full of sugar. And then the overwhelming majority, especially if you're not lifting weights and working out, and especially if your diet hasn't been good for any length of time, will be put in storage. That storage is also known as fat. So fat is a storage vessel. So when people say, boy, that's the worst outcome ever, keep in mind, when somebody is gaining fat, getting fatter, or if their fat is higher than they'd like it to be, it actually is an indication that your body is doing what it's supposed to do. It's reacting to save your life. In fact, think about this. When's the last time that your pancreas was wrong? In fact, if you're watching this video right now, or if you're still alive, I can already answer that for you. It hasn't been wrong. It has been right. So gaining fat is a representation that you're eating in a very dangerous way, and you're lucky enough to have your pancreas detect it and to store it as fat. Now, I know that's not your goal. In fact, in the 27 years that I've been in this business, I think there are four individuals, and I've worked with maybe close to 15,000, four individuals that actually needed to gain fat for certain reasons. So the overwhelming majority of people that come to see me or call me are people that want to lose weight and drop body fat and get healthier, maybe reduce or eliminate medications, improve the quality of their life, improve their energy level, improve their vibrancy and their quality of life and their length of their life and all of that is possible. So what's the deal with the glycemic index and why is it important? Well, the glycemic index just means it puts a value to the amount of sugar that we're consuming in a food so that we can keep it better within this range. So a glycemic index is a prediction. It's an estimate that if you ate a serving of food, how much your blood sugar would go up. Now for my private clients, I have given you all of these sheets. We've sent them to you. We've gone over them for you multiple times. But also, too, I wanted to include it for everybody. So attached down below is a copy of the glycemic index list and charts that I've developed and expanded over time. There are many different ones out there. If you go online, you might find that some of the numbers are somewhat different. I'm going to tell you, don't get too caught up in the numbers and worry more about the ranges that it's in. It's all about being in the right neighborhood. So what I'm really looking for is a glycemic index that's between 80 and 120 which is 40 points of glucose or lower. So I'm looking to eat things that are 40 or less. So for the most part, clients will say to me, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you do this? Give me a list of foods that are below 40, I'll eat them. Give me a list of foods that are above 40, and I'll avoid them. And believe it or not, it really is that simple. In fact, I have given those lists out quite a bit. I give them to all of my private clients. I've provided them before too, just as not an absolute, 
but as a way, as a gauge, so that you know exactly what's going on with your glycemic index. So we want to eat things that are 40 or less, and the lower the better, the higher the worse. That's what glycemic index represents. It's not on a food label. You're not going to grab a can of soup and look and see a glycemic index. You're not going to find it on uh, something in a bag. It's not going to be on there. There's no labeling to it. It's something that you have to learn and know because it's all about how much your glucose is going to go up. Now, once again, and I can't stress this enough, it's an approximation. It's not a perfect number. They're putting you in the ballpark. People are going to handle foods differently. Foods are different sizes. A portion is very hard to make it unified. So all of those things are going to change somewhat your blood sugar level, but still you could get a, an idea, a gauge of a, essentially what's going on. Now for some of you, you've seen me go through this before in a private consultation in one of my diet workshop classes or other, but for other people, maybe this is the very first time that you've ever seen this before, but I wanted to make this video today to show you how important it really was and to reiterate, controlling your blood sugar and keeping insulin low is really the key. It will give you very consistent and high energy throughout the day. It'll give you very low inflammation, inflammation of your blood vessels less inflammation of your arteries and your organs, less inflammation of your joints, less inflammation throughout your entire body. And if you could keep inflammation low, you're gonna live longer, you're gonna live better, you're gonna live healthier, and that's ultimately what it's all about. And also, too, you're gonna live thinner. As your insulin's low, you're going to keep your body fat low. You're not gonna store fat. In fact, you're gonna use fat for energy. And when you couple this type of nutrition with the right kind of workout, and if you have accountability and you track the results like we do here with my clients and Dr. Derek, it's all about improvement. It's something we could track and monitor over time. So hopefully today this video served you. Hopefully you learned about the glycemic index and why it's so important and what you could do to start eating better. Once again, attached down below is the glycemic index list. I wanted to give it to you so you had it and, and you could look at it and learn exactly what's going on, what foods to eat, what foods to avoid. But hopefully today this video served you. I'm Dr. Derek Alessi asking you to make the most of your life and live it fit.